Hey, thanks for joining me. This is John Tesmer from APQC's Open Standards Benchmarking Area, the manager of Open Standards Benchmarking, and today I'd like to talk to you about the process classification framework. Uh, the PCF is probably one of the most important documents for APQC, uh, not only because it's important to our members, but because it helps us organize our content and get actual work done here at APQC. So it's something that we use ourselves, very important tool for us. Let me show you how to get access to it. Here I am on APQC's homepage. You just click this Our Process Framework button right here. Click that. It'll take you right to our page where you can actually see all of the PCS that we've got available. You got your cross industry by clicking this link here at the top, uh, and you got some industry specific ones that are available here. Now, you might ask yourself, what on earth do people use the PCF for? Well, Three simple things. We actually did a research project to test this out. Three simple things people end up using the PCF for. First, content management. Second, benchmarking. Third, process definition, management, and governance. Those are the three main sort of use cases, the reasons that people download and get value out of the PCF. So let's talk a little bit about content management. Content management, we find, kind of goes along with uh, knowledge management. This is where organizations take the PCF and then use it to structure like a document repository or a content management database. And then they start hanging their content on those taxonomy pieces of the PCF. Everybody seems to get the PCF. Everybody understands the high level definition, how it gets broken down. And organizing content that way makes sense to everybody. It really accelerates how people get access to our content, to their content. Uh, second main use case is benchmarking. Uh, the PCF forms this sort of language, this sort of uh, Rosetta Stone for when it comes to managing and understanding processes. So it's a natural fit for benchmarking. Typically what we see is organizations use it in our open standards benchmarking. They map their processes to the, the well-documented processes in the PCF, and then they can get an apples to apples comparison very easily, very quickly. Uh, we've actually seen organizations that are not doing APQC benchmarking use the PCF to do benchmarking on their own. Because it's an open standard, anyone can use it uh, for their internal benchmarking purposes. So we've seen organizations do that. They love it. It's great. It really accelerates the time to value on benchmarking activities, especially when there are a lot of organizations doing benchmarking. Now, the third main use case of the PCF, as I mentioned, is process definition, management, and governance. Uh, this is a very common one we see a lot of times. Uh, people typically are trying to understand um, their capabilities. They're trying to understand their enterprise architecture. They're trying to understand how their applications all fit together within the scope of the processes at their organization. And they need a common, simple language they can use to interact with people at all levels of the organization. The PCF is that tool for them. It helps them to understand how everything fits together. It again becomes kind of this Rosetta Stone between all these different systems and peoples and groups within an organization so they can quickly normalize the, the words they're using to describe something. Uh, and then once that's in place, we've seen people actually take that and build process flows and actually organize work, organize people, create divisions and things like that all around the structure of the PCF. Let me take a minute now and show you what the PCF looks like. I've actually got it already open here just to save a little time. Uh, PCF comes in two different formats, typically a PDF version or an Excel version. Now this PDF version I've got open here, you can see it has uh, a number of different pages in it. Starts off with just some high-level introduction, shows the 12 main categories in our cross-industry framework, and then goes into a little description of how it's organized. So you can see here uh, the five different levels of breakdown that we've got from the category level all the way down to the task level. Further and further successive levels of detail here, all broken down following our business rules for mutually exclusive, collectively exhaustive, and hierarchically functionally decomposed. It's quite a mouthful, but it ensures that you get clear, consistent, accurate process definition here. Uh, important to pay attention to our numbering scheme. You can see what those numbers and parentheses mean here. Uh, and also our version numbering scheme is, uh, is defined here as well. Now, here's the meat of the PCF. You can see that we break down a category into a process group, and then furthermore, a process, and then below that, an activity. So this is the, the main structure of the PCF. Now, one of the main questions I get when people start looking at the PCF is, what is the definition of 
something in the PCF. So for example, let's take a look at this, assess the external environment. The definition of assess the external environment or what it means to do this process is the definition of its children. So in this case, uh, assessing the external environment means everything underneath it from 1111 through to 1117, all of its children. Uh, similarly, any process group is defined by the processes beneath it. So you can see this parent-child relationship uh, implies the definition as well. Now, there's no order in the PCF, no implied order. So just because something appears uh, before something else, don't take that to mean that it uh, must be performed in that particular order. They could be performed in whatever order uh, it happens. So those are just a few sort of tips, a little bit of an introduction of uh, what the PCF is, shows you how it sort of breaks down. If you have any questions, just get in touch with us. We're here to answer them for you. We want to make sure you get the most value out of the tools that we have to offer. If you have any questions, like I said, reach out, telephone, email. Uh, we even have a LinkedIn group now to uh, uh, facilitate some kind of community discussions. So got any questions, reach out to us. We're here. Thanks a bunch. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.